Happy Bodhi Day! <laughs> um, so, rather than give the standard historical recounting of the Buddha's uh, awakening, because you can find that in any number of places, um, we're doing something a little different tonight which is we're having our own little Bodhi Day Poetry Slam. And uh, we have a number of distinguished poets with us tonight. And uh, people have also uh, sent me some poetry of their own. And um, I'm going to start with one that uh, our Dharma brother uh, Sun Min sent us. Good old Johnson, uh, and he's extending his regrets that he can't be with us tonight. But his is buried under a million student papers. No time for Bodhi Day poems, but a million opportunities to help others. See you in a few weeks. Now, bowing is good. Finger snapping is also permitted tonight, okay? So, um, why don't we just uh, work our way around the screen here, and uh, Robert, why don't you hit the next one? You're gonna make me go next? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this may be the poetic equivalent of interpretive dance, by the way. It's I called it a record of moments on Buddha's awakening day. It's a personal uh, poem. A hug and a fall through infinite space. After a sip of water, this body becomes a foreign embellishment. On a New York street in rush hour traffic, I recognize everyone as an old friend and every one of them says hello and smiles, unheard of in New York City. A whirl of energy captures me and faces become transparent and dissolve in light. At another time, Mu spreads infinitely wide to embrace my father's death. And a tired mother on a New York street is revealed as my unknown best friend and I weep for her and her cold, wet child. At a birthday dinner, my friend and I become unified in a high samadhi of shared food to the annoyance of his family. Later, merging with the vegetable lady, her body and face become my body and face, and I am faceless with joy. Another time, my body and mind becomes like a shell, and something else is enjoying the ride. Alone with a koan, Hakuin suddenly appears intimately close, like an old uncle. I walk outside and merge with the sky, and there is nothing but connections throughout the heavens. Very good. Thank you, Robert. Um, how about, uh, I'll, I'll do another one that somebody sent in who isn't uh, here tonight, and then we'll go to uh, Malintha after that. So, uh, James Kenny sent, Buddha came to visit. He tossed his keys in the air. I found a place to join him. So, Dharma Sister Hua Min, so good to see you. Hello. <clears throat> My one is very short, as usual. It's um, all dharmas, life now, hot rice porridge. <laughs> oh, you've got the fingers snapping. Uh, good, so how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, would it be uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, would it be out of sorts to ask you to read that one more time? 
I didn't quite get the first line. All dharmas alive now, hot rice porridge. Oh, nice. Yay. It's a haiku. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, we've got one from Brad Hunter, our friend from uh, London, Ontario, who sent us, I met a person who casts no shadow, yet freely weaves and wears the myriad colored robe of autumn. Thank you, Brad. Uh, that would bring us up to our Dharma brother, Hangdahl. So here's the operative question. I, I have some here. Do you want one more than one? One and we'll see. Do I have to pick? Oh no, you can you can do have as however many you want. More than one. Okay. <clears throat> Definitely more, more than, than one. one. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't bring my notebooks with me. So some of these I've remembered and maybe in slightly different versions and two of them I wrote specially for the occasion. So I'll, I'll start with one I wrote uh, for, for this evening and it's dedicated to uh, Myung Jin based on his talk last week. All day, carefully untangling lights. Is it that one bulb is out? Or that 49 are lit. Oh, once more, please. All day, carefully untangling lights. Is it that one bulb is out or that 49 are lit? Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> This is an older one from, from a number of years ago, and, and I think Melinda might actually remember this when we were sharing, if I got it sort of how I wrote it. Every now and then, I think I know something, but then it passes, an exhaled breath. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'll, uh, I'll read another one that someone sent to us, uh, and then we'll move on to, uh, our, our newest friend, uh, Scott, and he's actually in Japan where it's actually December 8th. Oh, and, and you are too, Melantha, right? So you're actually on Bodhi Day. The rest of us are a little behind. We're living in the past. So, thank you, beings of the future. Uh, so this one is uh, from our friend uh, Mike Jinji Wood. A special day beyond, beyond, gone beyond words, turning directly to the one who says no days are special, but that every day is good. All right, so now we move on. I have several. Oh, do you? Okay. <laughs> All right, you can jump in then. Okay. <laughs> Monastery kitchen, a bowl of warm rice, and this don't know. The deeper I let go, the deeper I let go, this let go, Sazen. Not coming or going, my breath, a single thread. No place, no special place to go, yet the clouds change from form for this empty world. Bow after bow, this world, not good, not bad. 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, now we'll move on. Finger snap, finger snap. Now we'll move on to our uh, our friend uh, Scott. Okay, uh, so I have a few here too. That most of them are short, and uh, I'll, if you want to read again, just let me know. And you can hear me, all right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So uh, the first one is called T Way. Uh, for Yoshu Yoshida, uh, she happens to be a calligrapher friend of mine. Uh, uh, so, quietly savoring a few words ink brushed on a scroll that say no more than we can hear. Okay, that's the end of that. And uh, opening this pen, new green leaves, so bright black ink. Solitude is how you hear everything empty. As aware of nothing as the day I was born and knowing now why. Life is not unsayable. We just don't know how to let it speak. When wisdom and stupidity are one, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of these are, you know, intended to be. <laughs> okay, now the, the final one that I've prepared here, uh, uh, it's to be read. Uh, in a kind of uh, what what Nushan would understand the New Jersey accent, right? He's from New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. So, but it's been so. You're from New Jersey too. I'm from, I'm from New York. From New York. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> all right, well, this is probably combined uh, North Jersey and New York. But anyway, I haven't I haven't lived there in so long. I'm, uh, I have I have to actually practice reading it the way it's supposed to be read. But if I make a mistake, please uh, forgive me. We'll so, let you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like course. you. I've been trying. I'm like you. I've been trying to fake it out of town. Okay. Right. So it goes into this diner in Jersey, place I often stop along my route. I ain't putting its name down here on account of I don't want no tourist crowds standing outside waiting. Well, who the hell do I see but Bodhi Dharma? Gee, he gets around, don't he? I asked him if he's drinking tea, but he just bats the eyelashes he would have had if he hadn't turned them off long ago. And he's reciting to himself some Buddhist mumbo jumbo, and I tell him, hey, teach me the lyrics and I'll sing along. It's got a certain rhythm to it, but I don't want to go into that on account of I might lose my American soul and cops might tase me or something. Or I might freak out like that Reefer Madness movie. Bodhi Dharma, he's getting up to leave. So I says to him, hey, Mr. Dharma, tell me something profound before you go, will you? So this Bodhi Dharma fella, he give me a look of great compassion. And I look at my cup and see it's empty. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Unsan, I have, a, I have two short bird poems, if you like. OK, go for it. Now. Um, the first one is a Polish uh, form, which is I can't pronounce, but it's something like Trzynoglaskowitz. Thirteen syllables for each of two lines. On a sweet sunny day, I heard a lone bird chirping, so appealing that everything else became pointless. My second bird poem. Is a, is a haiku, I believe. <laughs> I've been challenged by Unsan before. <laughs> Bird suddenly jumps to the branch near my window, shocking eyes and heart. Thank you. Um, so, 
I see that Mike has joined us. Mike, have you joined us with a poem? I can look one up, actually. Oh, no, 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 no. It's got to be your own. Oh, snap. I'm fresh out. I forgot it was poetry <laughs> day today. Um, well, you, could, you could make something up, maybe. Uh, I'll give you a minute or two. Uh, so let's see. James, Scott, Scott, Brad, we got. Um, so, uh, okay, this one is from uh, Venerable Chulsong. Uh, Mind wanders, returns, it looks for answers, it thinks it knows excuse me, it thinks it knows things. Maybe it does, but at best it's only partial. Put it down. No need to figure it out. Oh, there it is. Inflections all mine. That's my presumed uh, intent. I was going to go with, oh, there it is. <laughs> As Robert snapped his fingers along with it, knowing that was coming. Um, okay. Uh, I, did I have a couple more to offer if you want. Oh, go for it. I burned it today. The Rakasu I never made. <laughs> Attaining the peak of Mount Sumero, diamond light penetrates seven directions. Action of illumination bringing forth. One breath in, one breath out. Uh, all right. Uh, I have a couple of my own. Um, you can channel Robin Williams in a certain film from many years ago. This one's called, Good Morning Shakyamuni. Breeze flutters the leaves. Is it wind or leaves that move? Sleep wipe from eyes while sitting in the morning sun. Warm eyes, ears, nose, body, mind. And uh, the other one is called Going to Work. Every single day he gets up in the morning and he begs for food. Only day one remembered, not sitting and eating food. And there we have it. Anyone have any more? Briar? Come on. No, I, I have I have more, but I'm I'm trying to select one that is worthwhile. Let's see. It's uh, all good, Robert. It's all good. Okay, this one this one uh, might be good. It's uh, based on uh, on a quote from Kazan. Um, the quote is: Is that okay if I give the quote? Though clear waters range to the vast autumn sky. How can they compare to the hazy moon on a spring night? That's where the hazy moon comes from, by the way. Most people want to have pure clarity, but sweep as you will, you cannot empty the mind. So I, uh, I responded with a verse, to be clear about haziness, sure about uncertainty, and open to insecurity is not a bad idea, given the kaleidoscope of experience. Very nice. Melintha, any others? I know you've got a million of them. <laughs> I have so many and I don't know which ones to say. <laughs> yeah, same problem. <laughs> what comes to mind? Oh. Sudden awakening time here. <laughs> A peacock's call. Buddha has the moon for a pillow. 
the moment, sorry, um, this moment in one single chair falling to the floor. Here, incense burning, nothing to attain. When all things are tasteless, this breath in and out. Letting go of thoughts, falling leaves. I roam this life in another name, fresh pluck time. Oh, it goes on in this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Do you want, do you want more? Yeah. So we'll take we'll another one. Going. Sure. I've, I've got a lot of poems too. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh, this one I haven't reviewed, but I see it looks okay ish. This is from my Zen poem collection, so it must be relevant. Uh, I go from one place to another, leaving hardly a trace. Just now I walked through the chilly street with flower blossoms falling all around me from the beautiful rosy apple trees. In the high wind, they flew by. Uh, it was a dizzying, disappearing act. And one more. Thanks. Yep, and then we'll get, uh, get one from Mike. Okay. I want to become part of what the birds are singing. A lot of birds in my poems. I want to become part of what the birds are singing. I want to become part of the morning light. I want to go where the dead have gone, sit on the grass so still that the dew comes to rest on me in pristine drops and I become part of the earth. <clears throat> cool. Um, all right. So, Mike, hang we, hit it. All right, y'all, here we go. Here's an old one from 2018 that I wrote about my prisoner friends. It's called Concrete Cocoons. The most bright and beautiful of butterflies I've ever seen lie trapped in concrete cocoons. Some lie in prison cells, others in tombs. Trapped and condemned in hell's womb, their radiance and glory shines brighter than the pale moon. Illuminating and inspirating like the wasp wasp star in the night their sh colors shine so bright their cocoons are more dazzling than the wings of the ones in flight oh thank you <laughs> the official finger snap very nice um i think um I remembered another one if you want it go for it it's Bodhi Day. We're celebrating. Peel back the gold from the altar Buddha. There is nothing within. Cool. Any others? Scott is, has his I hand. have one. Well, let's get Scott. He had his hand up first. OK. <laughs> Uh, here we go. A bomb that destroys borders. No more borders, no more bombs. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, Melinda. Uh, this one, I, I, I don't know whether I have shared many years ago with Google, uh, Google Plus in our group, but this was inspired by one of uh, Raikon's poems, I can't remember. It's a, it's got a Japanese touch to it. Just, it's a tanka sequence. It's called The Gates on Fire. When can we be this close to peace? Sake spilling on tattered robes and chrysanthemums. So slow is that last drop of red wine, the last hell being, the last hell being. Drinking out of the moon, my shoulders offer the many blossoms 
to take each hole. Yay. So, oh, Robert has his hand up. Uh, if we still have time, I've got uh, I've got two tree poems. Oh, okay, two tree poems. Is that two or three poems, or is that two tree <laughs> poems? No, it's not. It's not a joisy tree. It's a real tree. <laughs> <laughs> the, tre the trees are shining brightly in the afternoon sunlight. Patches of yellow white sun sneak through like excited kittens. The leaves are so green, they look like a tasty snack. Maybe I'll go out later and breathe the warm air. Thank you. And the next one is called uh, Sneaking a View of Cherry Trees. To catch the cherry trees in full bloom from my own window on an angle leaning back in the chair. So many blossoms mixed with the reflection like a clear cup of pink carnations in the sheer glass. Then a breeze comes up and the flower petals whirl. And that's the one and only time, the only chance there ever is to see the wind. All right. That's so beautiful. That's really nice. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Melissa. Um, all right. Why don't we um, wrap this up then? I think it's probably only fair to mention that the idea behind this was that the Buddha's awakening is the way the awakening in all of us in our day to day going to work, getting up, reading some poetry, sitting on a cushion, driving a car just every day we manifest our Buddha nature.